Hi everyone, I've got an update for you on the Washington Bridge project in Providence, Rhode Island. As you know, they've been demolishing the westbound bridge for nearly a year now. They have a pause before they can get into doing much below the water line uh, in terms of demolishing the rest of the pier and the top few feet of the piling below the mud line there. But an important aspect of this whole project is the fact that for over a year now, RIDOT has reconfigured the traffic on the existing eastbound bridge. This bridge was built in 2008 on reused foundations that were constructed in 1930. These foundations consist of hundreds of timber pile and they're only about 38 feet below the mud line. So it's not, uh, a type of structure that can withstand a lot of external excessive vibration. So right out when they crammed six lanes of traffic on a bridge that was designed for five, that being the eastbound bridge or bridge 200 as they refer to it in their inventory, they had a couple of engineering studies performed which apparently indicated that that was going to be okay, but as a further precaution, right out was to install not only a way in motion system to track how much traffic was overweight, as well as a structural health monitoring system. Well, I just got confirmation that still this structural health monitoring system is not up and running. And I'm gonna go over the details and what the implications of that are. This is for the existing eastbound bridge. So I just got this response yesterday. I'm recording this on June 26th, where I request for the monitoring results so far from the structural health monitoring system. And uh, they indicate the record you request does not exist or is maintained by the department at this time. Please note that the structural health monitoring system, SHM data is not yet calibrated and no documents are currently available. Well, They've said they've been calibrating this system for months now. What's going on? I mean, this system was supposed to be online at the end of October 2024. And in November, I had requested results from this system. And at that time in November, they said it was still being installed. So we've gone from it's still being installed, we can't send anything to you, to now it's being calibrated, we can't send anything to you. Now I saw evidence that this system was being installed when I made my site visit back in March of this year. I was accompanied by several local concerned citizens. So we took a look around what was going on at the Washington Bridge project. And you can see here these sensors that are being installed as part of the, the monitoring that is intended for this bridge. You can all see all these dangling wires too for the data acquisition system. So when RIDOT justified the expenditure for this monitoring system, they indicate that this request was critical. They said the request for weigh in motion station and structural health monitoring instrumentation on the Washington Bridge eastbound will monitor live traffic vehicle weights, monitor live bridge conditions and reactions, and integrate the data from both systems to determine the condition of and impacts to the bridge. The system will also allow direct enforcement of overweight and speeding vehicles by state police. And their justification, the eastbound Washington Bridge has become considerably more sensitive since the closing of the westbound bridge. Ensuring the structural integrity of the bridge as well as identifying and removing overweight vehicles from the bridge is integral to ensuring the safety of the traveling public. The systems will provide data which will allow us to analyze the bridge in ways previously unavailable and understand in real time what vehicles are actually crossing the bridge and the impacts they have. Well, the way in motion system, from what I understand, has been in operation since the end of 2024. But as I indicated, the structural health monitoring system, which is the really important piece. So if you have an overweight truck, the question would be, well, what damage did it do? And that was the purpose of this monitoring system. Of course, uh, RIDOT is conducting inspections of the bridge reportedly every six months, but obviously the intent here is to catch something very quickly if there were problems associated with the structural supports for this bridge. And show you the importance of this structural health monitoring system. The total system cost for weigh in motion and structural health monitoring was just shy of $2.8 million. And the structural health monitoring system was over half that amount at $1.6 million. 
And for the contract for this system, it was indicated that the structural health monitoring site services and warranties due upon installation estimated October 31st, 2024. Well, that's come and gone. But let's look at what is going into this system. Here's a layout of some of the instrumentation locations. This instrumentation consists of accelerometers, temperature sensors, and strain gauges. And this system was supposed to feed into a real-time display, a dashboard of the overall condition of the bridge. Now I wanna play a few of these clips. This was from the January 2025 press conference that was conducted by RIDOT Director Peter Alviti and Rhode Island Governor Dan McKee. Something was installed, I believe in December, to monitor loads on the bridge. Mm -hmm. This report stopped dead in time in November. So are there reports that say anything different no. from the new equipment you put up? And what exactly is the new equipment? That the new equipment that we're putting up is another layer so we have belts and suspenders, and now we're putting another pair of suspenders on this whole thing uh, to create a triple layer of protection and surveillance and monitoring of the health of this. And we will uh, be using that data to perform further analysis and to provide us an even higher level of surety that we maintain this bridge in good, a state of good repair that will be sound for its use for the entire period. What information are you getting from the equipment installed in December that wasn't available to you when this report was produced in November? So the, it, it's a much higher level of detail than is even required on any bridges like this, um, such as weigh in motion to determine whether or not any heavy loads above the um, regulated loads that are allowed on that bridge are going over it. If they are, when? Um, if they do, do they have any uh, minute even uh, impact on the bridge? We uh, understand this. We're going to such a granular level in studying and watching the condition of this bridge that we're going way beyond the normal and customary kinds of prudent levels of engineering surveillance we put on these bridges mainly because of the strategic importance of this bridge. And we're doing it out of an abundance of caution with layers upon layers of redundancy to make sure that even the most minute change that takes place, we're catching it, we're correcting it, and we're maintaining it properly. Well, clearly those promises, those representations have not been fulfilled. You can't have all this redundancy, all this extra scrutiny if the system's not in operation. All right, I'm gonna play this last clip here. And when will those findings be available to the public? Are they reported, summarized weekly? We, we will be, yes we will. And um, look, as anything with a high degree of technology and software and hardware combinations, we again are going reviewing over and over and over before we actually put create a live data situation. We're making sure that it works fine, that it is reporting properly, accurately, and we're calibrating it so that we, we have meaningful results that these various engineering companies we hire to do their analysis, and we're hiring another company to serve, serve, provide the surveillance on that data. So we're getting all of that in place right now, and as soon as we're assured that we have an extremely high level of confidence in the integrity of the system and the data it's producing, that's when we'll begin using it. And we're gonna take as much time as ne necessary to make sure that we get that right. Well, they're taking a lot of time. As I mentioned, this press conference was held nearly six months ago. I mean, they don't need that much time, I would think, to calibrate a system. I mean. I've got several questions. Has the system been fully installed for the structural health monitoring system? What's been associated with the delay? When will this system be fully operational? Are they gonna have a system where they won't have a real-time dashboard as they earlier promised because they're concerned about the implications of the public seeing potential areas of concern if, if they were to develop? I think it just goes to show that, you know, RIDOT management 
hasn't earned a high degree of trust given the way they shut down the westbound Washington Bridge suddenly in December 2023. They've run from discussing any responsibility or their part in the events leading up to the shutdown because now they've got the cover of the lawsuit. And just something simple like trying to manage a consultant for installing a structural health monitoring system for a very important bridge that has significantly more traffic than it was designed to carry and they can't manage to get it over the finish line. So the public affairs officer at Rhode Island DOT ignores my inquiries. I didn't get a response to my emails. I'm not sure what his deal is, but I think it's important for Director Alviti to answer these questions. So I've got several groups here I wanna thank. First, I wanna thank Josh from Providence. Again, I used his drone footage from June 8th. It's, it's great for these videos. I want to thank those of you who have contributed to buy me a coffee. That's an excellent way to support this channel. I also want to thank the channel members, as well as those of you who've provided super thanks. So I have other APRI requests pending and some that have been fulfilled and other information that I've compiled. I've got several more follow-up videos, in particular about the condition of the eastbound bridge. So please stay tuned for future videos.